Hello, and welcome to my creative journey. I'm Trung X, and today I'm excited to show you how I brought to life a unique piece of art. But before starting, I must share that there's a bit of a bittersweet note accompanying this adventure. You see, my previous video about the awe-inspiring megalodon shark and giant snake received heaps of praise on Facebook and Reddit, but somehow, it didn't reach as many viewers as I had hoped. So, after watching this video, please take a moment to explore that video as well. Your support fuels my motivation to continue crafting more captivating works. For this project, I've set my eyes on making the Nile crocodile, as I've been making too many videos about sharks. The concept is that an unfortunate Nile crocodile is confined and forgotten in a container of hazardous chemical waste at an industrial plant. Against all odds, it's not dead but has undergone a bizarre transformation, emerging as a fearsome zombie-like figure. Let's embark on this artistic journey together. As usual, I'll begin by constructing the main character using aluminum foil, paper tape, and polymer clay. You know what I'm gonna do now, right? I'm shaping the crocodile. This will be a swimming crocodile with its tail curved and its head raised. My approach to sculpting with polymer clay involves establishing the basic form before delving into finer nuances. So at this stage, I won't focus on the intricate details of the crocodile's body as further modifications could affect these small details. The intricate details are best reserved for later stages. With the basic body structure ready, I'll start working on other body parts. First, I'll make its four legs. Since the crocodile is captured in a swimming pose, I'll create four distinct leg positions, each contributing to the illusion of motion. I'll attach each leg to its body, and it might not be perfect, but we can refine it later. I'll make its mouth spread wide as it'll look scarier that way. The crocodile's gaping maw is now complete. Let's shift our focus to the throat. Here's where the real artistry begins, as it's time for the most time-consuming task, creating the crocodile's scaly exterior, I'll be using thin strands of polymer clay, applying them meticulously across the crocodile's back and tail with this size, I can add about 6 strands of polymer clay on its back. I'll need to adjust it before moving on. Alright, I'll now cut these strands into smaller pieces. These are the scuts you usually see on a crocodile's back. Then, I'll further refine each of these bumps to make it look more realistic. I also need to work more on the tail, adding some sharp spikes on the top. The tail seems a little bit short, right? This crocodile needs a longer tail to be anatomically correct. No worries, this is quite simple. The crocodile's basic body structure is now complete. It's getting dark, so I'll try to speed up. I hope I can finish the crocodile before going to bed and paint it tomorrow. I'll start working on the skin in detail. This is not difficult, but it requires precision and patience. A zombie crocodile would have damaged an ulcerated skin, right? I'll create some injuries and add a few exposed bones. Some viewers have noticed variations in the color of my clay in different scenes, sometimes dark, sometimes lighter. It's because I work indoors with regular lighting and use my iPhone for recording. So, the color can sometimes appear inconsistent. 
I'll try to save up to get proper video equipment and better lighting. Please watch my videos more. So that's it. Before going to bed, I will let you all review the crocodile that I just sculpted. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I create new dioramas every week, and the video of how to make will be released on Saturdays. According to the plan, this morning I was supposed to paint the crocodile, but I find myself in a dilemma because I've run out of paint, and the new supplies are yet to arrive. So, while waiting, what should I do now? I'm using thin steel wire coiled into loops, which I will then cut into small steel rings and connect them. My idea is to create a scene where a crocodile is trapped and forgotten in a container of liquid waste. It cannot escape because it's chained with an anchor. Therefore, I will work on creating the chain and the anchor while waiting for the paints. I wonder if I'm being too cruel to the poor crocodile, as it's pierced by a large arrow with a chain. What do you think? Oh, I've heard that some people use my videos on social media, especially on Facebook and TikTok, but they don't credit me as Amazing Trung X. They are so impolite, don't you think so? They often hide or crop my logo from the video frame as well. So, I'll add the Amazing Trung X logo to this background. Now, I'll continue to make a chemical waste container. It's actually just one side of the container. I'm using Formex to create the frame. The core of a silver paper roll is suitable for making water pipes, and it shouldn't be wasted. My painting supplies have arrived, and I'll paint the pipe now. Watch how I create a rusty metal water pipe with this paint, for the container part. I'll use foam inside. I'll drill a hole to fit the rusty water pipe. The container will be covered with tiles on the bottom and lower part of the wall. I'll also create a concrete wall texture on the upper part. First, I'll work on the tiled part. Now, it's time to paint. I'll use black paint to fill in the gaps between the tiles. Then, I'll paint dark and light blue for the tiles. This process took me almost two hours. So, the tile is done. Oops, I forgot to make the anchor, I should make it now. I will still make it with polymer clay. It's a rusty anchor, so I don't need to make it perfect. Thank goodness, I won't need to spend too much time on it. After painting the anchor, I'll continue painting the crocodile. A zombie crocodile would have different areas on its skin, some normal, some injured, some with sores, some with exposed bones, and even some dried and fresh blood. I'll have a lot to do. The base coat is done, and now I'll start painting different areas of the crocodile's skin. I'll mark the injuries and wounds with white paint. Now, I'll paint the flesh and blood. So, it's finished. Let's take a look at the completed zombie crocodile. I really like it, how about you? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now it's time to relax with a short stop motion.
This diorama involves a rather small epoxy resin pour, so I use thin plastic sheets as a mold. I will also place the freshly sculpted models inside. Since the crocodile is swimming, arranging it is not a simple task. I use super glue to attach it. The diorama is a bit small, so it's quite challenging for me. In this instance, I'd like to express my gratitude to Let's Resin for gifting me 1.5 gallons of epoxy resin to create this diorama. I hold this brand in high regard because of their excellent quality. They offer a wide range of products for resin art enthusiasts, making it easier for everyone to explore resin art at home. You can find the link to their exciting product range in the description if you're interested. With Let's Resin Epoxy Resin, I only need one pour to complete my diorama. This time, I poured resin 8 cm high. I'm excited to see how it looks when the resin dries. It takes about 36 hours for the resin to dry completely. A few drops of blue paint will make the liquid coming out of the pipe look more toxic, don't you think? Now, I'll have time to think of ideas for my next projects. With the resin cured, I'll proceed with the demolding process. As the mold is attached to the foam, this requires gentle handling. I'll also address the sharp edges of the resin block, ensuring that it's safe to touch. Finally, I'll redecorate both sides of the diorama's walls, as they're quite smeared and rough now. see how my diorama turns out. I hope you'll love it. Let's get started. 